The next construct we explain is the concept of an association. In the reality, we see that the individual instances, the individual objects, are related to each other. So, for example, we see that the student Peter Martens is registered for the program Master of Information Management. So there's a relationship between Peter Martens and Master of Information Management. Following the principle of abstraction, it means that similar relationships need to be abstracted into a concept at a higher level, at a model level. So at a model level, what we call level one, an association, that's the construct we will talk about, is an abstraction of relationships or links between objects or instances at level zero. So the association is a class or a collection of objects. It's a set of links. And it also has a number of properties. So it represents a type of links with specific characteristics. And the characteristics that we have are on the one hand, whether it is optional or mandatory to have a link with other objects. So for example, is it optional or mandatory for a student to be registered for a program? And the other characteristic is a number of the maximum number of objects we will find at the other end of the association. So in other words, how many programs can a student be subscribed to maximum? So we represent that as an interval, minimum, maximum. Minimum can be zero or one, and the maximum can be one or many, and the many is represented as a star. So in this case, for our example, we see that a student can be registered for minimum one, maximum many programs, and a program has zero to many student students that are registered for that program. So looking at the example, we see, for example, the zero on the side of students, the red zero, indicates that we can have programs with zero students. The Bachelor in Canonical Law is an example of a program that has zero registered students. We see that each student must be registered for a program. So we see indeed, if we look at a class student, each student has at least one link to a program. On the other hand, we see that a student can be registered for many programs. Indeed, we see that Leen Janssens is registered both for the Bachelor TV and for the Master TV. The way we write down an association in UML can vary. It's always a line and the line can be adorned with several extra information. So for example, we will name the different roles. These are the directions in which you can read the association. So at the top example, we see student is registered for program. So that's the role from student to program. And then we put a name next to the program. In the other, in the other direction, a program has registered students. We put the role name register student next to student. The other notation is to put the role names in the middle with little arrows. So employee works in department and department has employees. We put those two role names in the middle, but we add little arrows to indicate in what direction you have to use these role names. It's not mandatory to put role names. So the third example is just a straight line with no role names. And the last example is where you use only one role name and the other role name is implicit. So for example, a program consists of program years, but the relationship from program year to program has no name. When you have two classes in a UML class diagram, you can have two different associations between those two same classes. So here's an example where you see that a person can on the one hand be owner of a car and on the other hand can be driver of a car. And we record this information separately. So I have showed this as blue and green links. So you see in the bottom schema that Pete owns a Mini, but it has two drivers. Both Pete and Jos can drive the Mini. Same holds for the BMW. Anne owns the BMW, but both Pete and Anne can drive the BMW. What can also happen is that you have an association from a class to itself. So if you want to um, express the fact that people can be related to each other, in this example via supervisors relationship, then you have an association supervisors or supervised by, depending on what direction, in what direction you read the association. And this expresses the fact that 
um, people can be related to each other. So in the uh, instance level example, you see that Eric supervises Bart and that Bart is supervised by Eric. And on the other hand, Eric supervises Jan and Jan is supervised by Eric. The explicitly modeled associations allow us to navigate from one class to the other and in this way they give rise to derived associations. So for example, in this schema we can navigate from student to program to find all the programs a student is registered for and then we can navigate subsequently from program to faculty to find the faculties those programs belong to. And so this allows us to navigate also from student to faculty via the programs the student is registered for. So in this way we obtain implicitly modeled derived associations. For this derived association it is possible to also determine the cardinality and multiplicity. So assume for example that when we navigate from the student to the faculty we define that this is the derived association belongs to, then we can determine to how many faculty a student belongs to minimum and maximum. So we see for example for the minimum that a student is subscribed for minimum one program and that each program belongs to minimum one faculty. So it means that a student will always belong to minimum one faculty. What's the maximum? Well we see that a student can be, subs be subscribed for many programs and even though each program has only one faculty by the fact that a student is subscribed for many programs, the faculties of these programs can be different from each other, so it means that the student can belong to many faculties. In the other direction, navigating from faculty to student, so to find out how many students a faculty has, we see that a faculty can offer at least one program, and that a program can but needs not to have a subscribed student. So it means that in the worst case, a faculty may have zero students. What's the maximum? When a f well, a faculty has offers possibly many programs and each program possibly has many students. So a faculty possibly has many students. The way we define associations in a UML class diagram is pretty important. As we have seen, associations allow you to navigate from one class to another. So when applications are built based on that UML class diagram, those associations will also define how in an application a user can navigate from one class to another. And this of course will impact the possibilities to satisfy information needs. So let's look at an example. I have logged into my uh, ERP system of my university and so this means that in the class professor one instance has been selected namely me. Now what I want to do in my application is I want to find the students that I'm teaching to. So in order to navigate to my students the first thing I will have to do is to navigate to my courses. And so I have a button say so find via my courses and as you can see in the UML class diagram I have zero to many t courses that I teach. So indeed when I click them I will see the list of courses that I am teaching. So now I have navigated to my courses and I will select one course. I select a business information system course and so now I will be able to navigate to students. And what do I see? Well the application offers me a list of students but not just a flat list, it will group the students according to the program these students are subscribed in. So you see here, the screen shows the list of programs and then for each of those programs you see the list of students that are subscribed in that program. So in this way you see how you can navigate from professor to the course and then to all the students that are in that course and additionally you see the program those students are subscribed for. The navigability of information determines the possibility to satisfy information needs. Let's look at the same example, but now assume that the direct link from course to student has not been captured by the business analyst, so the gray association isn't available. 
On the other hand, I do have the red link from course to program, so I can see which programs a course is part of, and then I can also see which students have been subscribed to a program. So I can navigate from professor to course, then to program, and then to student. What is the problem? Well, if I want to have a list of the students that are subscribed to the course Business Information Systems, what I only can do is I can see all the programs the course Business Information Systems appears in, and then I will have the list of all the students in that program which is more than the students that are subscribed to the course Business Information Systems. As an example, the course Business Information Systems is part of the Bachelor Handelsingenieur, but there are only 168 students out of the 621 students follow that course. Why? Because the program has three years and only the students of the second year follow the course Business Information Systems. The course is also part of the program Master of Information Management, but there are only 20 out of the 90 49 students follow that class, because some have an exemption and some students study part-time. Same holds for the Bachelor Informatics. There are only approximately 40 students out of more than 200 students follow the class, and same holds for the Master Management, where only two students chose this as an optional course. So we see that clearly, the non-availability of the grey link going directly from course to students hampers the satisfaction of the need to know how many students are subscribed in the course business information systems. So wrong associations or missing associations are detrimental to information need satisfaction. Another thing we have to take into account is that a UML class diagram may contain parallel paths to navigate from one class to another. So for example, here we can see that we na can navigate along the blue line from course to student. This gives us the students that are subscribed into a course. But we can also navigate along the green line. And the green line gives us the students that are subscribed to a program the course is part of. So you navigate from course, you find all the programs the course is a part of, and then you find all the students of that program. Clearly, navigating along the blue path will give you less students than navigating along the green path. The same holds in the other direction. So if you navigate from student to course via the blue path, then you will find all the courses a student has chosen to be part of his program. If you navigate along the green path, then for a student, you will find all the programs of that student and then all the courses that belong to all those programs. So the navigation along the blue path will give you a limited set of courses, whereas navigating along the green path will give you potentially a very large set of courses. In general, it is like that, that when you have two paths to navigate from one class to another, that the sets of objects you will find will be different.